my assignment this week was to deal with overflow in many different aspects. And we preached, and let me get to it, and I won't put it in part one, part two, but we preached over, overflow, God's gift of abundance, which means you have to understand that, that God has a gift, it's called abundance, and you have to have the ability to receive it. Then we went and ministered another sermon on overflow, reaping the results of heavenly affection. Set your affection on things above, not on things below. Then we dealt with overflow, God's tsunami of blessing for you. These are the titles. And then uh, overflow, the abundance producing power of expecting great things. Now, I want to finish my session out with this message that I've had in my sermon repertoire for quite a while. Didn't know where to put it. Didn't know when to speak it. But I know a lot of times, sometimes God will give me something and I'll write it up and I have to minister it that night or the next day. But sometimes I've had some messages in my book that were well, for five years. I never touched them. I just wrote it. And all of a sudden I'd be going the Lord say, now. Because he's always ahead and never behind. And I've learned to obey and listen to him. So how many of you want some overflow? Hold your hand up. Spiritually, physically, financially, in every area of your life. Now when overflow comes, it brings a responsibility. A responsibility to do what? Many people are going to ask you questions while you're blessed. At first, automatically, you got to understand, there's an accuser of the brethren and his name is Satan. So if you have something that someone else doesn't have, most people won't give you a compliment. They'll give you a, a criticism because of envy or jealousy or misunderstanding. You remember, it doesn't take, the word understanding is U-N-D-E-R-S-T-A-N-D-I-N-G. But if you add three, word, three letters in front of it, it goes to misunderstanding. So it's amazing how quick somebody can misunderstand something. Especially if you're a minister of the gospel like myself. You're on television all over the world. And uh, I, my program's translated 13 different languages. It's going out literally circling the globe. So naturally people remember the white hair and all that kind of stuff. And if they see me in a nice car, they, 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 you, I need to get this. Boy, that's a nice car. I wonder how much money he's stealing. Or if I happen to go to lunch with my daughter, I've had people say, he's got another woman. And it's my daughter. Now, do you like that? No, but you know, you live in a glass house when you are a public individual in terms of television. So television isn't a lot of fun sometimes in terms of because it brings notoriety and people form opinions that they know nothing of. So when you begin to get blessed and we're known, a lot of people call us the word of faith movement. We're not a movement, we're a lifestyle. A movement, you know, you need some help. That's all I'm going to say about that, glory to God. We, we, word of faith is a lifestyle. You understand what I'm saying? It's a lifestyle. And if you're dealing with prosperity, you can get ready. Oh, my God. Because the world, most of the religious world has convinced the world that Jesus embraced poverty as a blessing. That's why I dealt with one of the sessions earlier that, you know, it's better to obey than to sacrifice. Most people can quote that verse because they've learned to sacrifice but not obey. They sacrificed in poverty when they didn't have, they, they should have sacrificed, but you could have done exactly what you wanted to do without really any help from anything if you understand God's word. If you live by your giving, you know, instead of making a living, you make a giving. But you got to understand, so when this overflow comes in the abundance that God wants it to come, it brings a responsibility. So you might want to write this down before I, I get into this message. You must be superior to power instead of driven by power. The problem is that one of the temptations of having overflow, pressed down, shaken together, running over, it will bring you power. It will bring you power in the secular world. It will bring you power in the spiritual world. But you got to learn to control that because if you're not superior to it uh, and you're driven by it, you're going to hurt yourself, but you're going to hurt more people and damage more things than you've ever thought possible. See, Jesus was superior to power. Instead of being driven by it, because at one time they wanted to kill him. And Jesus kind of let them know who he was. He said, I can call more than 12 legions of angels to take care of this situation real quick. Now watch this. Now one angel in the Bible knocked down 185,000 men. One lick, bam, they hit the ground. So if a legion of angels, 12 legions would have come, there would have been 20 billion, 400 million men would have bit the dust in one lick. And the world has not known that kind of population, even to today, from its beginning and probably never will till its end. But my point is because he was superior to power. You heard him say, not my will, but thine be done. He goes to the cross because he's superior to it instead of driven by it. Oh, everybody understand what I'm saying? So remember this, you that get around people like us, you're going to get the word of God in full force. I mean, full force, category five. You understand? I'm telling you, F5. I mean, I mean, powerful. But you got to be, you got to be very careful that you don't become driven by it. 
but always be superior to it. So I want to deal today, and, and we're going to read several scriptures. Genesis, well, let's start off with Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. The Bible said, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. So automatically, the first thing that happens to Abram, or Abraham, is that he has to obey. God gives him a command. Now the title of my message today, I want to stop there for a minute, is because I have a responsibility to answer why I'm a blessed man spiritually, physically, and financially. I have a responsibility to you because some of you, most of you say, you know, but Jesse, but you really don't know me. You know about me. Now, Jerry Savelle knows me. Kenneth Cope knows me. And how you know someone is you spend time and you fellowship with you. You go out and eat dinner with them. You know, you may go on vacations or whatever, and you begin to know someone. You may, you, you love your wife, you marry her, but you ain't, you don't know no woman till you marry her. And she don't know no man till she marries you. I don't care because when you pick her up, when you're dating, she's always pretty. She's always smelling good. Looking good. Glory to God. But after that marriage day, ain't no telling what you're going to meet at the house. <laughs> On both sides of the coin. You'll find out that she wakes up with a bed head and bad breath, just like anybody else in town. That's called life. See what I'm saying? So a lot of people will ask me, well, how come you got to have a jet? You know, I don't think preachers ought to have a jet and all that kind of stuff. It makes me, it angers me because to me, it's a tool instead of a toy. And I knew, I, people say, is that your jet? And I said, yeah. Well, I don't think you ought to have it. And I get a little irritated. I say, well, I don't think I asked you. Did I ask you? <laughs> I guess I get them love of God taste that Brother Cope was preaching on. <laughs> but then the Lord said, you know, you gotta really, you're really responsible to answer that. And the Lord gave me this message to end this series here on Overflow. Is it materialism or is it manifestation? You got to understand when someone asks you about your car or your house that you live in or the kind of clothes you wear or your children's clothes or your possessions, what they want to know is how you got it and did you get it the right way or the wrong way or is it just materialism? They never think of the word manifestation. Is it possible that the reason why you're driving a nice car is because you sold one, that you gave one away? Is it, is it possible because you got a nice motorcycle which is a manifestation to you, to them it's a materialism that they don't realize how many motorcycles and bicycles and jeeps and trucks and vans that you sent overseas to minister the gospel in missionary works all over the world. Because the Bible said what you sow, you should reap. Is that correct? The Bible said as long as the earth remains to be seed time and harvest time. So we have to answer the question, is it materialism or is it manifestation? Now you got to be careful not, not to become superior to that power because you can cut somebody's guts out and, and start, uh, instead of being driven by it because the word of God's a double-edged sword. One side cut the devil, the other side cut you. It's a very sharp thing. You can be cut before you realize it. Sometimes you can be hurt. You don't know till you went home that you was hurt. That's how fast the word of God can do something or a criticism can. So in Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, God gives him a command. And in verse 2, he says, I will make of thee a great nation. And it's not a promise. This is a prophecy. And I will bless thee or empower you to prosper and make your name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. Now, in that verse right there, the world don't, want, don't believe any of that. They don't think a preacher's name ought to be great. They don't think a preacher ought to have anything. Now, you know, you understand? But this is coming from the lips of El Shaddai, Jehovah Jireh. He's saying this. Uh, he, he, he thinks totally different from the world. He says, I will make of thee a great nation. Well, who do you think you are? That's the first thing most people would say. And I will bless thee. I will empower to prosper you. So chances are, a man's going to become wealthy, spiritually, physically, and financially. Yeah, but the, the secular world don't want that. No, no, you can't do that. You got to be poor. But notice what Jesus, God is saying, I will make thy name great. Or in other words, you're going to become famous. People are going to know you and respect you. You're not going to be able to walk around like you think you can. And then he said, and then God is always not only makes you a contributor. He makes you a distributor. He says, and thou shalt be a blessing. Now, when Abraham received that, you go to chapter 13 and Abraham, verse one, Abraham went out from Egypt, he and his wife and all that he had and lot with him into the south. And Abraham or Abraham was very rich. Everybody say very rich. very rich in cattle, in silver and gold. So God showed you his possession. Now, was that materialism or was that manifestation? See what I'm saying? We're going to deal with that in a minute. Now go with me to uh, Genesis chapter 14. There's been a little battle here in Genesis chapter 14. 
And Melchizedek comes out in verse 18 and says this to Abraham. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, verse 18 of Genesis 14, who brought forth bread and wine, or covenant, and he was the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him, or empowered the, the, uh, him to prosper, and said, blessed, empowered to prosper, Abram, of the Most High God, possessor, not confessor, but possessor, which means you got to have something if you're a possessor, of heaven and earth, and blessed, or empowered to prosper, be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enmities into thy hand. And then because of that, Abraham, Abraham does this, and he gave him tithes of all. In other words, the spoils of war belonged to Abraham because he won the war. So he gave him a tenth of it. And the king of Sodom said unto Abraham, verse 21, give me the persons and take the goods to thyself. He said, no, I want some slaves. Abraham said to the king of Sodom, now watch this man. I have lift, I have lift up my hand unto the Lord, the most high God the possessor of heaven and earth. Now, Melchizedek calls Abraham possessor of heaven and earth. Abraham calls God possessor of heaven and earth. See, they're in covenant together. What God's got, Abraham's got. What Abraham's got, God's got. So is that materialism or is that manifestation? See my point? God's trading off here, buddy. Watch this. He says, and then he tells him something that most people wouldn't realize, wouldn't say, that I will not take from a, a thread even to a shoe latchet and that I will not take anything that is in thine, lest thou shouldest say, I have made Abram rich. Now, he was superior to the power of them goods instead of being driven by the power of those goods. Did you see that? Do you understand that? So he could just become wealthier right there. Then he says something, verse 24, that's amazing. Save only that which the young men have eaten and the portion of the men which went with me, Abner, Eshkol, and Mamre, let them take their portion. Remember that verse. Put that in the little cells up there. We're going to come to that. So I want to talk today and I want to answer the question why, you know, a lot of people ask why, uh, you know, Kenneth Copeland and Jerry Savelle and Creflo Dollar, Jesse Duplantis and Glory. And all, how come we're so blessed? Well, first thing you have to ask, is it ma uh, materialism or is it manifestation? Now, when you understand something, let me put this back over here. When you understand what that means, then it's going to answer a lot of questions in life about possessions that people have. So write this down if you are uh, taking notes. Number one, success is not dependent upon the will of man. Just because a man thinks you ought to be successful or he made you rich, that's what he said. Let no man say that you made me rich or success is not dependent upon the will of man. It is assured, assured by the word of God. God said, I will bless you. I will make your name great. It didn't make no difference whether the king of Sodom was going to give him anything because you see, Abraham was already assured by God that he would be blessed. But automatically, that meant manifestation would come to everything that Abraham did. Everything. Spiritually, physically, financially, bodily, having babies when they're too old to have it. I mean, it's amazing what God did with this man. So he understood all this stuff as manifestation. Now, a lot of other people might have looked at it as materialism, but my uh, not Abraham, even the king of Sodom said, listen, man, this is material. This is some good stuff. Just give me the people and you can have the rest because you're the boss over this thing. And he said, no, because he was, he knew that the king of Sodom would have went home and said, you know, I gave him a bunch of money to handle this war for me. And he said, no one will tell or say that any person made Abraham rich. So success is not dependent upon the will of man. It is assured by the word of God. So, you know, the reason why I'm a blessed man, I, I'm assured that the word of God said I would be blessed. Now, I have to meet certain conditions. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, as we dealt with the other day. I have to meet certain conditions that if I sow, I expect to reap. Most people don't mind sowing. They get a little nervous when they're reaping. But when they start reaping a lot, that really tears up the secular world and tears up the uh, Christian world. So I've had some people say, boy, you got a nice watch. Well, I've got a all kind of watches. I probably had more watches than anybody probably you know in your life. One time I forgot my watch at a church. Let me give you an example of this. Now, you know, if you just saw this off the cuff, you'd think, my God, man, this guy is just materialistic. Let me show you what happened because I walked out of a church with this in my hand. I forgot my watch and I wanted to make sure, ladies and gentlemen, that I wouldn't go over my time limit. So I forgot I had a wireless microphone on like I have today. So while everybody was shaking hands, hugging each other's neck, I turned around to the assistant pastor of that church. I said, excuse me, can I, can I borrow your watch? So I'll know exactly what time. They didn't have a clock in that church. I said, uh, so I can know what time I'm at. So I don't want to, you know, over my time, go do something that would be improper. He said, oh yeah, but just no problem. So he takes his watch off and he gives it to me. Everybody just shaking, loving each other and all kinds of stuff. So I 
put it on the pulpit. Nobody could see it. It was just like this, you know, and so I could watch my time so I wouldn't go over my time uh, frame. Well, bless God, some man that was on the front, uh, front pew just simply got up and walked off. And I saw him walk off, and I thought, well, we... and the first thing I thought, oh, the devil lied to me about it. Man, you said something just made him mad. I said, I didn't say nothing. You know, first I'm trying to think of something I said when I know I didn't say it, but yet the devil planted something in my mind that I said something when I knew I didn't say it, and I spent wasted energy trying to figure out what I didn't say. <laughs> Meditate on that for a while. <laughs> you may have to get the tape, pull it back a little bit, uh, slow it down, you see? Well... I preached that service that night, and the pastor of that church said, but Jesse, we got a few little finger foods and things of that nature in the back. We'd love you to come back if you, if you got a little time. I said, yeah, I'd love to, and maybe fellowship a little bit and be a blessing. So I went back there, and then there's the man that I saw walk away. He said, bro, Jesse, I apologize. I didn't mean to sound too, look a little rude. I just got up and walked out. I said, I thought I, I may have said something that you, you know, that disturbed you. He said, you didn't say nothing. I said, that's what I thought I said. I didn't say nothing, but I wonder why, I, you know, I, I, I Thought about it all night about trying to figure out what I said that I didn't say. Like Yogi Berry said, I, I never said what everybody said I said or something like that. You know, you know, yogiisms. You know, if you come to a fork in the road, take it. <laughs> it's like when one of his friends when they called him, uh, Joe Garagiola called him. He's, he always gets lost going to Yogi's house. And he said, Yogi, I'm lost. He said, I know where you're at. Just keep coming. Now, you figured that out. Glory to God. <laughs> so, and he said, Brother Jesse, I don't want you to ever be without a watch. I said, excuse me? Because I already had given that watch back to the assistant, the associate, assistant pastor. He said, I heard you say you didn't have a watch. Then, then the bell rang. I said, oh, yeah, I have a watch. I just forgot it. And I, I wanted to make sure I didn't go over my time limit. You know, so I asked this, the assistant, you know, not to, uh, you know, <laughs> let me use his watch. He said, well, I'm a jeweler. I said, you are, yeah. He said, I want to make sure you never, ever be without a watch. And he gave me 32 watches. <laughs> 32 watches at one time. Now, let me ask you a question. If you walked out at 10, 30, 11 o'clock at night and a policeman stopped you with 32 <laughs> watches on your arm and you would say this, the Lord bless me. <laughs> Do you think that would be materialism or manifestation in that policeman's mind? He'd think you done stole something. I thought mine, and I mean, they were pretty expensive watches. Some of them a couple of thousand dollars a piece. And I think a cheaper one, about 400 and something bucks, his price. So 400, his price, probably be 1,200 to yours or something like that. Or maybe not that much, but you know what I'm talking about. Seiko's, beautiful, nice watches, man. So I thought... There was a bunch of preachers that come by. I said, what? I said it out loud. What I'm going to do with all these watches? And the pastor of the church said, I take one. <laughs> I said, well, bless God. He's the pastor. Take what you want, boy. So he prayed. Hey, I gave away 30 watches that night. Now, is that materialism or is that manifestation? Now, before that, I have given watches away many times before that. But I never got 32 of them, one lit. So I came home with two. When I got to my house, my, one of my brothers used to work for me, my oldest brother. He said, man, I like that watch. The Lord said, give it to him. I said, well, I just gave away 30. <laughs> and I kind of like this one. I said, well, Wayne, you like it right here. He said, oh, no, I didn't say that for you to give it to me because I know my brother, he'd never do that. And I said, no, let me be a blessing to him. So I just gave it to him. It just blessed him. So I took the other watch and I put it on my own. Remember, I still hadn't got home. You see, I mean, I got, you know, when I got home, I went straight to the office instead of going to the house. So <laughs> my son-in-law, he was, then he wasn't my son-in-law, Eddie. Uh, he was working for me in the tape department back there. He said, man, you got a new watch? I said, yeah. He said, that's a beautiful watch. The Lord said, give it to him. <laughs> I said, oh, well, Jesus. I said, you like that watch? Eddie said, yeah. But he said, I said, well, I'll give it. Oh, no, I didn't say that. You know, I said, no, it's all right. It's a blessing. So I, now I don't have a watch at home. I said, I got to go home and get my watch. Well, I went home, got my watch, put it on. Two days later, I went to Arkansas, Camden, Arkansas. Now, I want you to listen to this. Now, is this materialism or is this manifestation? Now, watch it. All of a sudden, there's a very fine-dressed man and woman sitting on the front pew. I don't know them. They know me, but I don't know them. Turned out they're doctors from Tennessee. They said, Reverend, De and I had, this is years ago. Remember when the gold nugget fray, uh, craze was going, everybody had gold nugget, you know, ring, watches, whatever, you know. In your nose, I don't know, whatever. Glory to God, hallelujah. He comes up, and I thought, I told Kathy, I said, you know, I like that gold nugget 
watch, and, uh, you know, those gold nugget things. It was a new style or whatever. He said, Brother Jesse, we came here, drove from Tennessee. I said, yes, how you doing? Fine, God, God bless you. Make a long story short, he says, uh, um, the Lord told us to give you something. I said, oh, I, I don't require nothing. Thank you, I appreciate it. No, and he opens up, and what he gave me, uh, this gold nugget watch, was worth more than all them 32 watches. I put that on my arm real fast and covered it. <laughs> I didn't want nobody to see this watch. Because this is a fine watch. <laughs> I covered it. Glory to God. I thought, wow. Glory to God. Oh, that's a, excuse me. That was not in Arkansas. That was in Alabama. And I went home for one day and turned around and flew back to Camden, Arkansas, the preacher meeting on Sunday morning. And I had that watch on. Oh, it looked good, bro. You should have seen it. It's a blessing. Ooh, ooh. Now, when people saw, I saw people go, hey, you see, check that watch out. Hey, you see that watch? Well, that's an expensive watch. Yeah, it was a very expensive watch. But you see, it was a manifestation from 32 of them. But to the people that were saying that, it was materialism. Before you ever judge somebody, you might want to, you might want to think a while. So I'm sitting there. And the pastor of that church in Camden, Arkansas, I'll tell you his name, Brian Bohr. You know Brian, don't you? Brian Bohr. He said, Brother Jesse, that is a beautiful one. I said, Brian, ain't this something? I said, let me tell you how I got it. The Lord said, give it to him. I said, let me tell you how I got it. Said, let me tell you how I got it. The Lord said, give it to him. I said, no, no, let me tell you. How I got it. I'm trying to go, I, I don't hear this. I don't want to hear this. I, I like it much. I said, Brian, you like this one? He said, God, yeah, man, that's a beautiful wife. This is on the platform while they're singing praise songs. I took it off my wrist. I said, it's yours. Oh, no, brother. I said, no, just go ahead and take it. It's fine. It's blessed. <laughs> Gee, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Now, let me, I'll finish the story in just a minute. Let me, let me read this point. Success is not dependent upon the will of man. It's assured by the word of God. Why did you give him that? Manifestation acknowledges the source as God. See, if I was willing to give it, then I'm acknowledging God as the source of that watch. So write that down. That'll help you. Manifestation acknowledges the source as God. So that's how you can tell some of you people, who, if you think that we, uh, that we dress too well, I don't know, whatever you think, you think we shouldn't have this and that. Well, you know, our manifestation not always acknowledges the source as God does that. The Lord Jesus Christ done it. Well, I gave him the watch. Catholic said, where's that watch? I came home. Where's that watch? I said, I gave it to Brian Bull. Just say, you're such a kind man. She said, you know what I want to do? I said, well, she said, I've been believing God to buy you a, a Rolex. Now, I said, oh, a Rolex? No, I said, I don't know Rolex. I said, and that time a Rolex cost about $12,000, $10,000 or $12,000. She said, now you believe God? I said, no, I don't want it. And he wasn't the next day. Somebody come in and says, you know what? The Lord told me to give you this and gave me $12,000. Kathy said, that's not your money. That's my money. <laughs> okay, I gave her the money and she went and bought me the watch. Now, I am climbing good here, boy. And every time when people say, boy, brother, that was a beautiful Rolex, what you got? I said, you know, the Lord blessed me with that. Let me tell you, I got that. And you know, when you start with them 32 watch, they think you're lying like a dog and all that. But it's literally the truth. Why? Because manifestation acknowledges the source as God. Manifestation, write this down, reveals your position, your position as an heir. The reason why I'm a blessed man, because I'm an heir to a blessed God. What do you want me to do? I shouldn't look bad. If, if my, the only way I should look bad is if my God looks bad. Now, that's spiritually, physically, and financially. Now, if you're materialistic and you're thinking, you're going to think that's a terrible statement. No, no, no. You see, you, you're the one walking in disobedience, not me. Don't write me no ugly letter because I ain't going to answer it. I don't deal with foolishness. I mean that sincerely. I mean, I'm a, a happy man, but I am also a straightforward point. You don't ever misunderstand, Brother Jesse. What you want? I'll just tell you straight. Why? Because I don't like people going around saying, just tell me what you think. So that's how you operate and function in life. That way people never misunderstand because if it's straight, they understand things. So manifestation reveals your position as an heir. So I've had people say, well, bless God. How come you? I had a Catholic person one time say, I don't think you ought to have a jet. I said, what religion are you? She said, I'm Catholic. I said, your preacher got a jet. I said, your preacher got a bigger jet than I got. I said, you know, the Pope has a plane. Did you know that? I'm doing the same thing as the Pope. I'm preaching the gospel. I said, he got a jet. How come he can have a jet? And I don't have a jet. I said, you know, I'm going to Rome. If I speak to the Pope, I'm going to tell him, you don't want him to have a plane. <laughs> I told her that point blank blunt. She goes, ha, ha, ha. 
I said, well, sure. How come your preacher can have a jet, but I can't? Well, he's the Pope. I said, okay, next question. What is he doing with the plane? I mean, do you see the Pope flying around? <laughs> hey, y'all, <how> you... <laughs> I thought I'd just fly over and say hi. No, the only time he uses it is for the work of the kingdom. The only time I use my plane is for the work of the kingdom. And all, I've had two jets. I'm believing God for my third one. I'm going to get it pretty soon. Hallelujah. I, I think me and, you know what? You might have seen me and Brother Colton pretty soon. He leaning this way and I'm leaning that way. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Watch it. I mean, it's a blessing of the Lord I, I, on all my years. And I can use the plane personally if I want to. My board of directors gave me that, 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 that blessing. And all my years I'm on the plane. I've never used it personally. Didn't have time. But use it every time I get on it and go and preach the gospel somewhere. So before you think I'm materialistic, you might ought to realize how many planes I've helped pay off and bought. Did I help you? Yep. Hallelujah. I don't mind. I helped that man. Kenneth Cope called me. He said, Jesse, I was praying and the Lord said you'd help him. I said, help who? He said, the Lord. I said, he got some trouble? <laughs> What's the Lord? He said, the Lord said that me and you would help him to help Matt Goldberg get a plane. Am I telling the truth? I don't mean, I, I normally won't, wouldn't tell nobody that, but I, th it's part of this message. He said, and you know, I was looking at some money. Brother Coleman, he's in, he's in Fort Worth. I'm in New Orleans, Louisiana, and I'm looking at, trying to make up my mind, what should I do with this? And it was the exact amount that Mac needed with Brother Coleman's donation, my donor, to buy his plane, pay, pay for it. I said, Brother Copeland, it's in the mail. He said, buddy, I know if Jesse Man says it's in the mail, it's in the mail. I said, thank you very much. I, got, I, thought, I, I, I had to run around my office a little bit. I thought, you would honor me enough to tell another preacher that I would help you, God? And he said, yeah. I said, now, I know I'm not in materialism. I'm in nothing but manifestation because God's trusting me. Do you see that? That was an honor. I don't know how many times I've done that. I'm not bragging on that, but I'm just saying, giving you, is it materialism or it's manifestation? So before someone criticized me of me flying something, you might not want to do something of the things that me and Kathy have done. Amen. Then you'll realize that any plane ever placed in our hands is always a manifestation and never material. I don't even want to learn how to fly. Now, Brother Colton loves to fly. Jesse don't want to learn how to fly. He want to learn how to land. <laughs> Forget that flying stuff. I don't want to learn how to land. Get the baby on the ground. That's all I'm interested in. So manifestation, a knowledge of source as God. Manifestation reveals your position as an heir. Watch this. Manifestation shows trust in the possessor of heaven and earth. Why? God is the proprietor of all things. Write that down. Manifestation shows trust in the possessor of heaven and earth. Now, Abraham, he showed trust. He called God possessor of earth. Melchizedek called Abraham possessor of heaven and earth. Manifestation shows trust in the possessor of heaven and earth. God is the proprietor of all things. Now, I'm dealing first on the manifestation part. Is it materialism or is it manifestation? Now, the believer, that's me and you, is greater than the world. In the, in, in the environment that we're in. Why? For we are safe in the faithfulness of God. If you believe God is faithful, you'll always walk safely on this planet. Let me say it again. The believer is greater than the world or in the environment that he's in. For he is safe or she is safe in the faithfulness of God. See, so nothing ever turns to materialism. It's always manifestation. Why? Because your faith is not in what you possess. Your faith is in the possessor of heaven and earth. But he calls you a possessor of heaven and earth. Why? Because you're trading back and forth. What he's got, you got. What you have, he has. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. So when you understand that, then possessions are not just things. It's a principle. As for possessions, oh, I love this. It is a principle and not a custom that it's his guide. In other words, the reason why I'm a blessed man spiritually, physically, financially, I, I am. But that doesn't mean I don't need things for ministry. Person, I don't need nothing, yet people bless me all the time. Why? Because I do have an anointing of increase. Just get me on your side. Oh, you do hang around me. You, are, you, you, you cannot stay sad. You ain't going to stay sick. And you ain't going to stay broke. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm telling you. I was a blessed man. Jerry's a blessed man. When we go somewhere, we're always trying to bless each other. We're always getting the fights over food tickets. I said, this is mine. No, you bought the last one. I don't care if I bought the last one. I'm doing this one. No, no you ain't doing this. And we, we cut deals with these waitresses. They make a fortune on us. <laughs> <laughs> Cutting up, just bring it to me. I'll give you a little extra. Bring it to me. <laughs> Sometimes I think they give us a copy of the same ticket. <laughs> each of us. <laughs> I don't know. Lord. <laughs> they, get, they get blessed. Hallelujah. So when you understand that, then you understand it. Now, when you become a possessor, 
when your things are not materialism and manifestation. I want you to listen to this. Did you remember what Abraham said when I read in Genesis 14? He said, I will not take one thread or one latchet of a person's shoe so that no one would say that somebody made Abraham rich, only God. But, now watch this, give the portion of the things that are there to the men that come with me. Now that's a very phenomenal point. Let me read this. In giving up our right, you may give up your right not to receive something, but you have no right to give up someone else's right. In other words, don't make your right a homiletical, hermeneutical, philosophical, theological doctrine. Because what may work for you may not work for that person because they may not be in the same position that you are. And then you say they don't have a lack of faith. Maybe they, maybe they weren't supposed to have faith in that at all. Maybe they're such a babe in Christ and you're trying to shove a T-bone steak down their throat and they can't even handle a baby jar of, of pudding or something like that. But they will one day. So you have no right to say they don't have no faith. Or you don't have any right to say, you can't do that because you got to give them people time to grow. Listen to my point. In giving up our right, we are not at liberty to give away that which pertains to others. Uh, Abraham told the king to give men their portions. Here's why I made a mistake. Kathy's one revealed it to me a few years ago. And it was such a blessing. I, I didn't see it till she said it. I'm a man I walk debt free. Nothing wrong with borrowing money. People think I'm against borrowing money. I am not against borrowing money. If God told me today to go borrow money, I go borrow it. I don't have a problem, but I serve a Jewish God, you know, so I prefer interest to be paid to me. <laughs> it just feels good. You understand what I'm saying? Instead of me paying interest, that's just called good business. Watch this. So there's some people tried to, brother, to adopt my way of walking instead of what God told them to do. Now, my way of walking, you may not be able to walk where I walk. That doesn't mean I'm better than you or less than you. But maybe the Lord may put you on a different path. But we are, it's, it's like going up a mountain. We may all take different directions, but we're going to wind up at the same place. That's the top. Now, you may do it this way. One guy may shoot straight up that mountain. But the whole kid, when it all, when the rubber meets the road, like they say, we all meet up at the same place. It just depends on what trail we take to get there. Well, I had this particular person. He said, well, bless God, brother Jesse, if you built your places debt free, I'm going to build mine debt free. I said, that sounds good. I'm going to agree with you. But his faith was not there to do that. So he was relying on mine to do that. My faith will not get you to the top of the mountain. My faith will help you. But only God's faith and your faith is going to get you to the top of that mountain. Well, guess what happened? He went and dipped away over his head, almost lost a whole ball of wax. Now he's debt free today. And I thought, well, bless God, what's wrong with that boy? And then Kathy said, you can't make someone live by your faith. You can only just tell them what the Lord's done for you. And I'm pulling him up that mountain and he's scratching his legs, beating and losing everything. And I'm thinking, what's the matter, boy? Suck it up. Come on, let's go. We can get this thing done. But you see, he hadn't had that revealed knowledge. You understand? It was mental assent instead of heart said. Now, I didn't get, I didn't get down on him. I would never do that. But you see, I gave up his right in my way, he think, but Jesse, you think I ought to borrow money? I said, you can borrow money all you want, but bless God, I'm going to stand on the word. I ain't borrowing nothing. Believe my word of God. Jesus said, I'm going to get what I said. And I, I got him excited, but that didn't increase his faith. Yeah. Excitement does increase your faith. That studying and hearing and hearing the word of God is what increased your faith. Amen. You see, so he didn't get that and got disappointed. He said, well, I guess I, just, I guess I believe wrong. I said, no, you didn't believe wrong. I said, you just tried to run before you crawled. I said, but I mark my words, if you crawl or you run, you will get to the top of that mountain. Amen. Well, bless God, he borrowed some money, bless God, and got so, gotten so much debt, I mean, he really got bad. But he learned real quick not to just get excited about something, but to study it, to meditate on it, to get it inside of you so you can get it outside of you. And today, he is totally debt free. He said, now I understand exactly what you meant. But see, I can't give someone's right up if they want to do something, some people say, I'm going to borrow someone. I say, that sounds good. I'll help you. Bless God. I'll just be a blessing to you. Yeah, that's great. Well, before years ago, I said, what's the matter, man? What's the matter? You ain't got no faith. And that was wrong to do so because I was trying to get people to walk where I was already walking. Well, you understand what I'm saying? He said, now all of a sudden, manifestation wasn't working the way it was working for me. And then the devil has an excuse to say, you see, that message don't work. But you see, you, I mean, only you know where you're going to go. Only you know. See, you, don't, you determine your destiny. You are the architect of your life, not anybody else. Now, we challenge you. And if we speak with the word, says the word's going to say what it said and it's going to do what it does. But the whole key is you're going to have to ride that train yourself. You're going to have to flow into that 
Because if not, before you know it, you know, a lot of people want to come to these meetings just so they can get a new car, so they can get a new plane, have some new clothes. To them, that's all materialism. I'm going to deal with that in just a minute. Are you ready for the other flip side of this coin? See, they just want to get around us so they can get something. They believe in first fruits. So somebody, hey, you know, uh, you want to be my spiritual son? Oh, yeah, I'd love to be going to cost you now. Now watch stuff like that. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. Nowhere in the scripture do I find that the sons took care of the fathers. I find out that the fathers took care of the sons. Do you know Abraham, <laughs> Isaac never spent one dime of his money. He only spent Abraham's. But by the time he got to Jacob and Esau, he was still spending Abraham money. Isaac was loaded. I mean, Isaac had his money and his daddy money. <laughs> now, there's nothing wrong with taking care of your spiritual father or your physical father. Don't, mess around. don't, take this, don't make a doctrine out of this. What I'm saying was, is this, but I mean, if, if you get to a point when your life will bless God, you know, eh, Jody, my daughter don't have to pay me to be her father. But you know what? Tomorrow's my birthday at this time. And you know what? She's just looking for, to buy me something. I said, Joe, you ain't gonna buy me nothing. I was here when you was born. Don't worry about that. Don't make no difference. But no, you see, because I don't require it, she wants to be a blessing. Kathy been bothering me all day long. I ain't got you nothing. I ain't got you. What you want? You know, not being mean to me, but I'm just saying, want to be a blessing to me. I said, that's fine. I said, you my birthday gift. Ooh, Jesse. That's all I can say. <laughs> Now, how are we going to tell all of you that are watching my television to judge this, too? Because you, you have a right to. I have a responsibility to make you understand why I have a plane, why I'm a blessed man. Okay? Let me show you the difference between materialism and manifestation. I dealt with uh, manifestation first. Now, let me deal with this materialism. Materialism, write this down, brings you into association with the world. That's how you know when you become a materialistic because you become associated with the world. And the Lord said, never associate yourself with wicked people, even for the attainment of your end. You don't do that. Jesus would not hook up with the devil when he said, you want a kingdom? I got a kingdom. It's all organized. It's got money. Take it. Do what you want. You're kingdom minded. I got it. All you got to do is worship me. Nobody need to know nothing. Just be between me and you. Jesus said, no, he would not associate himself with wicked people. That's materialism. Let me give you a prime example. The great man of faith. Now, some people call Abraham <laughs> the father of faith. I really don't do that, even though he is. I call him the father of mental mapping. He looked for a city which had foundations, was building maker, is God. Now, I don't mean this, I'm not trying to plug my book, but I'm coming out with a new book in about two or three months. It's the best book I ever wrote on uh, building mental maps on the road to divine destiny. He's the father of mental mapping, because if you can't see it, you ain't going to get there. Now, this ain't, this ain't positive thinking. This ain't, you know, no, no. This is vision as plain as it gets. Now, now you don't go to my table. You don't have that. That's coming out. But my point is, I want you to see this. Materialism brings you in association with the world. Lot had the chance to become one of the greatest men of God because, you know, he, he's on the bottom floor. He's next to Abraham, the main man. But he looks towards Sodom. And he sees money. To Abraham, everything God gives him is manifestation. To Lot, everything he sees is materialism. Why? You can even know that by his name, Lot. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he was in the real estate, I guess. I don't know. Now watch this. When you start getting away, when you begin to change your mind from manifestation to mysterious, to materialism, you actually begin to open up where you lose. He pitches his tent towards Sodom. Rem remember, it's never just a quick jump. See, when you start going towards sin, you, you never just say, I quit, I'm going to sin for the rest of my life. It's slow. It starts off. You want to have an affair? It starts off with a thought. Oh, that secretary of mine, Foxy, and she's a mom, oh, no. Would you like some coffee? Sure. Why? So I can watch you walk, mama. Yeah. Yeah. And the devil says, your wife ain't never got you a cup of coffee in years. She'll spill coffee on you instead of a, get you coffee. Have you ever seen her walk like that? Does your wife smell as good as that? Oh, Lord. And you know every time you tell that girl to do something, she do it? Every time you tell your wife to do something, she don't do nothing, give it a little scrawl. What's the matter with you? Starts with a thought. It's all slow. Yeah. And before you know it. He pitches his tent towards Sodom. Now, Lot was a rich man. But when he gets to Sodom, he becomes a poor man. 
Because when your manifestation turns into materialism, when all you're interested in is showing people what you got and what you own, you went from manifestation to materialism. He pitches his tent towards Sodom. The next time you find Lot, he's lost everything. He's uh, like the lost his whole family, including his two daughters and everything. He comes out of Sodom, a poor man. You want to read that? That's in Genesis 13, uh, verses 10. He looks and he sees the green grass. I preached a sermon years ago, the green of the grass, the greater deception. I got it from a lady. She's now passed away. But I thought she was brilliant. Her name was Irma Bombach. She said, the grass is always greener over the septic tank. <laughs> I love that statement. So when I heard that, I said, I'm going to preach a sermon on the green of the grass, the greater deception. It's probably one of our vintage messages or something like that. Well, you see, that grass was green, but it was a great deception because you see, all of a sudden he's with the father of manifestation, but he's turning materialistic. Mm, mm, mm. Now, listen to this. Materialism brings you into association with the world. Write this down. Materialism gains by the misfortune of others. I got this guy in a bind. I'm going to suck it dry. Yeah, but you're a Christian. Don't make no difference. I'm going to suck it dry. Give to him. Are you living in a dream world? I got what he, I want what he got. And I need it for my ministry. So I'm going to suck him dry. That's the difference between manifestation and materialism. Materialism gains by the misfortune of others. Prime example of that is Zacchaeus. Now, Zacchaeus is a short guy. Size of Jerry Seville, I guess so. <laughs> just joking, Jerry, just joking. <laughs> I mean, we, well, we, we have good times together. He can't see Jesus. This boy got some problems. So he climbs a tree. I mean, he had so many problems that literally drove him up a tree. Okay, it's corny, but it makes sense. So he can see Jesus. He don't think Jesus is going to stop. Why? He's materialistic. He's a dog, man. He's stealing. He's gained all his fortune on the misfortune of others. He overtaxed people. He does all kinds of things. Because you see, he's driven by power instead of superior to it. So you have the power to do it. I'm going to take this guy down. I'm going to make him pay. Even though he doesn't have the right to do so. But he figures he's got more money to fight it in court than the other guy. So the guy settles. See that? So all of a sudden, Jesus stops, which makes everybody mad because you see, if you're truly a man of God, you ought to be moving in the gifts of the Spirit at all times so you'll know if somebody's messing up in their life or not. Sound familiar? Wonder why pastor didn't pick up that person committing adultery with the worship leader. Wonder why this and all the kind of stuff. Well, why didn't you? Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. Now, sometimes God will speak it to you. But you have a thought in your finite mind that sometimes God is saying, repent, repent, giving that person grace and mercy and redemption, doing everything he can before they fall into the hole of sickness and sin and disease. All of a sudden, Jesus stops and says, Zacchaeus, get out the tree. I'm going to your house today. Wonder why the Lord wanted to go to a sinner's house. Maybe a Christian never asked him to come eat. Now, you're going to criticize him. All them guys saying, he's going, he going, he had fellowship with publicans. Well, Pharisee, did you ask him to come to your house and eat dinner? No. But you're going to criticize him? He said, I'm coming to your house today. He got so excited about it that his materialism turned into manifestation. He said, Lord... I'm going to give half my goods away. Lord, you can, tell, uh, you can tell when materialism becomes manifestation because all of a sudden that materialism no longer has hold on your life. He said, and if I have stolen anything, now he's just getting honest. Jesus didn't say, come on, confess to me. Bless me, Jesus, if I have sinned. It's been a lie. I ripped off the brother so-and-so and sister so-and-so. No. Jesus, look at that boy. If you want to read that, let me give you the scripture on it. It's Luke chapter 19, starts at verse 2, about the whole thing of Zacchaeus. He said, Lord, if I, I, I'll give half my goods to the poor. I'll be a blessing. Man, you just come to my house. Man, you are wonderful. Listen, and if I have stolen anything, I'll return it fourfold. You know what Jesus said? Salvation or soundness has come to this house. All of a sudden, this materialistic little Jew becomes everything he got now. He says, my God, he becomes a giver a restorer, and he recognizes that Jesus has done that in their life with one visit. So some of you, maybe you can't see Jesus. You need to climb a tree. You understand? Because he will stop and say, hey, I'm coming to your house. So materialism gains by the misfortune of others. Now, let me write this down. If God's gifts to you become materialistic in your sight, then you have been deceived by the false glitter of the world. 
I had a preacher tell me this not too long ago. Well, Jesse, I want to believe God. I'm believing God for prosperity. I want people to know I got some money. Believe with me, God give me a big diamond ring. So, you know, people, you know, so people think I'm blessed. I said, brother, the blessing's not in a diamond ring. Now, I got diamond rings. And that's not the issue. But it's not, and I don't mean, and I'll say it publicly. Yeah, I'm a blessed man. I like jewelry. You know, I like a little bling bling. I'm into bling. You know, I like bling because the Lord, Lord's king of the bling. I'm telling you, God is big king of the bling. Make P. Diddy look like he on welfare. You understand what I'm saying? I'm chasing God, king of the bling. You understand? <laughs> but my point is this. If you're just doing that so you can show off. I had a person ask me one time about a real nice watch. Why do you want that watch? I said, because I like it. I said, did I come up to you and try to just sell it to you? No. I said, the only reason I bought it because I liked it. Not because uh, I didn't buy it with no one else's money but mine. I just seem to like it. You know, it's like buying a shirt. You may like buy a shirt that no one else likes, but you happen to like it. Jerry Seville gave me a wonderful gift today. Gave me, he saw, <laughs> I'm known for my wealth. I don't mean that arrogantly and privately. I'm known for increase and I'm known for joy. He bought me a shirt with dollar signs all over it. <laughs> Am I telling the truth? What's that? Preacher. I forgot what's on the back. Oh yeah, on the back of it says, relax, it's only money. Now, when I saw it, when I saw it had dollar signs on it, I thought Creflo Dollar could wear this shirt. <laughs> but the Lord seen fit to bless Jesse with it. <laughs> Through, in fact, Jerry was going to buy it. Then some pastor said, no, I know about Jesse or whatever. Let me buy it for him. Now, I could afford that shirt. That's not the issue. But, the, but because I'm not saying... I'm going to wait for around this store till somebody buy me a shirt because I'm a man of God and you owe me something. That's materialism. Let me say it again. If God's gifts to you become materialistic in your sight, then you have been deceived by the false glitter of the world. It's a false glitter. The gain of the world is but transitory. Faith reaps lasting uh, recompense. Let me say it again. The gain of the world is but transitory. Faith reaps lasting recompense. The rich young ruler had the greatest opportunity to make the biggest investment he would ever make in his life. Now watch this. Jesus told the rich young ruler, that's in Luke 18, verse 18 to 35. You can go study it out yourself. He said, hey man, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, well, you know what the commandment says. And he, he names a few of them. He said, now watch this. It's the first time Jesus ever been confronted with someone that's actually that good. He said, I've done that. Now, have you ever met a man that's done that? I ain't never met a man that kept that that good. I ain't never met one person in my life. I've never went up to the body and said, you know, if you just keep the commandments and keep, keep you be, you know, you'd be all right. I've done that. He said, I did that for my youth. Oh, man, that's a pretty good old boy, isn't it? Jesus loved him. The Bible said he looked upon him and loved him. Why? This guy is good. This is the kind of guy you want your daughter to marry. He's successful. He's clean. Jesus said, you lack one thing. Then you got to watch what Jesus said. He said, go sell what you have. He said, go give what you have. Because sometimes there's a time for giving and sometimes there's a time for selling. Don't get locked into a box here. He said, go sell what you have and give to the poor. Oh, that's too much. Walked away sorrowfully. Now, people have taken that passage and automatically interpreted it as this. Let me tell you why they interpret it. Uh, you see that the Lord don't want you having any money. No, the reason why the devil lied to you about that, that man was materialistic. Everything he had was material and not manifestation. It proved to you if he was a man controlled by manifestation instead of material, he'd have said, anything else? And ain't no telling what type of wealth that man would have received. Because if Jesus blessed a boy with a two-piece fish dinner of 100 fold, what do you think it had done to that man? See, so he realized that all that life, that you can go to church, you can keep all the commandments, do all those kind of things and be as materialistic as you can get and not be what I call a manifested person, a possessor of heaven and earth. See, when you are a possessor, you have manifestation. When that stuff possesses you, then you have materialism. I've learned something. That I don't own anything God may require it of me at any time. Now, I don't want him to. Common sense. You know, you like things. You know, the Lord bless you with something. You know, you like it. But I mean, what you going to do? You're not going to go to hell over disobedience over some, something that will rust and corrupt and could be stolen. or No, you have to do what the Spirit of God tells you to do. Yes, thank you, Lord. 
Now let me close with this here now, because I, I need you to understand something. That this Bible is very powerful, but you, let me go back to that first point. You have to be superior to that power instead of driven by that power. Would you turn with me to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and, and let me close with this. Are you enjoying this today? Is it making sense? So the next time as you turn into 1 Corinthians 6, you see somebody driving a Mercedes Benz, and they're a preacher. Before you criticize them, you might want to find out that that Mercedes Benz might be a manifestation because they've been a blessing to so many people in their lives. Or if you see someone uh, wearing a nice clothes, some lady, real nice clothes, and maybe before you say, I bet they're stealing that money. I bet they're doing all the kind. You, may, <laughs> you better watch yourself. They may have given more clothes away than you could ever buy in your entire life. And if somebody owns a plane, before you criticize them, you might find out, bless God, that maybe they've sold so many other planes. And different things of that nature. I had a person that just irritated me. You know, people are always trying to beat people. Always trying to get ahead of someone. I'm not trying to get ahead. I'm not in competition. I'm in cooperation. I've learned something. Cooperation is a lot easier than competition. Man, you know, because then you see, then you got to win the race and beat your brains out just because, because of you. I'm just glad I'm in the race. Now, do you want to win? Well, sure, but not at the expense of hurting someone to do it. Now, are you at 1 Corinthians chapter 6? Look what it says in verse 12. Now, it says the word all. All things are lawful unto me. Ooh. But all things, now notice we're talking about things here. All things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me. Now, stop for a minute. Let's tear this apart. Start again. All things are lawful unto me. This is a possessor. He's not materialistic. He has manifestation. It, all of it is. But all things are not expedient. In other words, I don't have to have it, even though I deserve it. And I can have it. Then I realize in the time frame of where I'm at that it may not be expedient. All things are lawful for me. So he says, all things are lawful unto me, and all things are lawful for me. So before you criticize him, I said he shouldn't have that. Remember, all things are lawful for him. Or her. But I will not be brought under the power of any. Or I will not be brought under the power of that materialistic thing. I will always keep myself in manifestation instead of materialism. So I don't care if you got the biggest house in California. Or if you're watching by the internet, the biggest house in India or Asia or Russia or whatever. You might have, you might have Catherine the Great's castle in Russia or whatever. Or, or Windsor Castle or Buckingham Palace. I, I mean, if I had... If, if, <laughs> I mean, I, I'll never live in England, but if, if, if Queen Elizabeth called me and said, uh, but Jesse, I won't give you Buckingham Palace. I said, thank you. I'm going to England. <laughs> I, I like palaces. Why? Wow, first, they're beautiful. Glory to God. I mean, they're God. Not to show off be, as, as a black. It's lawful unto me and it's lawful for me, but it may not be expedient. So that's how, how do I know if it's expedient? I go to the Lord Jesus Christ about that. And I say, is, since you are Lord of all, possessor of heaven and earth, and you call me possessor of heaven and earth, I need some wisdom. Should I be superior to this? If I accept this, will I always be superior to it, or will I be driven by it? Now, you know the future. And you're going to get an answer from Almighty God. And he, and he said, he don't mind you having that. I've seen some people believe this message, and when they got the stuff, it destroyed them. Let me say it again. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me. So it's unto me and law, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Now, let me close with this. I am amazed at how many people think that I eat in fine French restaurants every day. You'd be surprised. I live in the city of New Orleans, what I call the uh, just... I've been all over the world. It's the best food in New Orleans, Louisiana. I don't care what it just is. It's amazing. But they think, now, can I eat in a fine French restaurant or a fine Italian restaurant every day? Yes. In fact, me and Kathy usually eat out twice a day. We, we usually eat lunch. We eat a little breakfast at the house. We'll eat out twice a day, usually dinner or lunch and dinner. We can afford that. God's been good and gracious to That doesn't mean Kathy can't cook. She's done a lot better than that spaghetti stuff now. She's doing a lot better. <laughs> But see, when she got to learn what she could cook, then she told me, I, I've been delivered from this bondage. And I said, is, weenie spaghetti is bondage? 
You know, but anyway, so I said, where do you want to eat tonight? Where do you want to eat lunch? We can do that. Now, sometimes we just go to some one nice place, buddy, where you got to be dressed up, see, or whatever, you know, go to a real nice place and eat. Then sometimes I say, Kat, where do you want to eat? She says, I tell you what, man, let's go to Wendy's. I say, would you like Popeye's better? Now I'm a Popeye. I love that chicken from Popeye. <laughs> and I know it's cholesterol, but <laughs> I just like fire. I know I shouldn't be eating. I don't eat it every day. Don't misunderstand me. But my, my guy, I do like a little piece of it once in a while. In fact, Terry told me every time she passes Popeye, she think about Jesse. Maybe I should have bought into that. I should have bought some stock in Popeye. Maybe that was the Lord speaking to me. But I'd have ate up all the profits. <laughs> You know, it would have become materialistic instead of manifesting. Now watch this. I've had people come say, I can't believe you eating here. Why are you eating here? They think I'm broke. They, you somehow, no, we wanted a piece of chicken. <laughs> and they, but they won't accept that. They go, no, no, you know, I can't be. Why would, no, we just wanted a piece of chicken. Oh, we just wanted a hamburger. Oh, but you know, y'all, how come you're not in a suit? Don't want to be. You got, you got shorts on, Brother Jesse. Wow. I got legs. They ain't that good looking, but they legs. You got to give it to Jerry Savelle. He got guts. All of us, man, me and Creflo for the last two years have been believing God to get out these suits. We, but Jerry just walking here. Glory to God. I live. <laughs> he first born. But you got to understand, Jerry. Jerry got a position me and Creflo don't have. He first born. He first born. You understand what I'm saying? He first born. <laughs> and, and Brother Combs don't love us, love him or uh, me and Brother Creflo or myself. But first born, something. You know, that's okay. So I tell Creflo, you, you going to wear one of them Hawaiian shirts like Jerry? Will you? You, do, you go first. <laughs> No, no, you go first. <laughs> we're believing God. Keep praying with us. We're believing God. <laughs> y'all come so dressed so casual. I see y'all. I see people come get saved. They got flip flops on. <laughs> oh, Jesus. T shirt. Jeans hanging down. The crotch is down the head. Holding on to the pants. Trying to. I want to get saved. I can't ask you to lift your hand. You'd lose your pants if I told you to lift your hand. Lord Jesus, I can't ask you to do that. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> Y'all, we're in this thing and it's hot. And these TV lights and all this stuff. And you know, if you look at that kind of clothes, you look broke. And some of you will come and say, but Jack, I want to bless you. Pull out a lot of bills. I go, Lord Jesus, did they make that this morning? Why? Well, you have power over yourself. You're not superior. You're not driven by that power. You're superior to it. That's a phenomenal statement. You see, so is it materialism? Is it manifestation? So I realized this. The minute I asked the Lord, the minute I have something that I, I become too materialistic with, then it probably has to be released from my hand. But now I don't believe in religious cons. I'm bleeding for a pair of glasses just like that. <laughs> Want to trade? <laughs> well, you know, that's wrong to do that, yet a lot of people do that. And that's wrong to do that. I had a lady come in there, she said, uh, the Lord told me to tell me you're going to pay for my trip here. I said, that's wonderful, but he ain't said a word. <laughs> well, you're not listening. I said, oh, baby, I got two ears. I can listen well. Let's pray, see what he says. He ain't said nothing yet. What'd he say? <laughs> see, I don't like that kind of stuff. I don't mind being a blessing to someone. Don't misunderstand me. That's not the issue. But the issue is when you start perverting the wonderfulness of a gift or perverting someone's niceness for your own benefit, that's a wrong thing. So is it materialism or manifestation? So you may see me in a nice suit. You may, me see, may see me with jewelry to knock your lights out. Then the next day, well, the one day, the other day, Kathy couldn't believe it. I put on short pants and a T-shirt, and I put on one to find a diamond. Watch, you ever saw? And I just went down. People going, God, what's it, why is he wearing that? Look at that. He ought to be wearing that watch with a suit. No, I wanted to wear that watch because I liked it. I just decided I'd wear it that day. Kathy said, that don't fit. I said, okay, next question. 
Well, it may not fit. That's not the issue. But I just decided that I wanted to wear it. Why do I have to fit into someone's way of thinking about me? I don't have to do that. I've never been much of a follower. I've been a leader most of my life. I'm not bragging on that. I like cutting my own. I may have to go through the woods to get it, but I, I, I kind of like doing that. I like every step I see. The next step, I don't know where it's going to go. That's walking by faith and not by sight. So it's just such a blessing, see? Now, and then it's an, and I'll follow. Don't misunderstand me. I mean, we, you know, we, we all have fun together, do those things, but I, I, I'm not going to fit into what you think I should do. But if it offends you to the point that you're willing to lose out with God or it, then I'll become all things you want me to be. Why? Because I'm matured enough to allow that to happen until you get to the matured enough to say, but Jesse, I'm sorry I put that requirement on you. You need to do that because that shows you the love of God. You see my point? All things are lawful unto me, but not all things are expedient. All things are lawful for me but I'll not be brought under the power of them, which means this. I can preach without a nice watch on. I'm using that as an example. Or I can preach without a nice ring on. I mean, I like a ring. and something, you know, In other words, it doesn't make any difference because I'm not in power to it. I'll say this in close. <laughs> I never used to wear ties. When I first started preaching, I refused to wear a tie because I always, I, I said, I ain't wearing no ties. So I didn't buy none. I bought suits and I wore open collared shirts. Am I correct? Well, Kathy said, you're getting ordained today. I said, yeah. She said, you ain't going down there unless you go buy a tie and a shirt. I said, I ain't wearing no tie. I ain't wearing that kind of shirt. And I heard the Lord said, hearken unto thy wife. I said, we're dealing over a tie and a shirt. He said, well, if it's nothing, why are you having trouble with it? I said, let's go to town, get me a tie and a shirt. I put the tie and the shirt on. I said, ah, you, I walked in, there were several men, and he said, God, Jesse, I ain't never seen you with a tie and a shirt. I said, are you impressed? Yeah. You sure look a lot better? Or you thought I looked ugly before? No, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> so I got ordained into the ministry with a tie and a shirt. First time I wore one. Am I telling the truth? Yeah. I was always kind of, I was the first kid growing up. Now, this is years ago, you know, when I was young. When I, was, I was the first kid to ever wear flare jeans and bell-bottom jeans to school. Oh, Lord, they wanted to kill me. I was the first person to let my hair grow long. Lord, Lord, the little heathen from hell. I was the first person that brought a thermos that they thought it was Kool-Aid, but it was slow gin. Yeah, come on. <laughs> By the time I got the algebra, I was go A plus B. Hey, Lord, Lord, equals C. Come on, baby, let's go. <laughs> I was a musician, so I could play more on these cheerleaders from these other schools. They liked me because I played music, you know, because that draws people. Oh, I, I was always a radical. In that way. My daddy said, because my hair was too long, he said, boy, if you ever run away from our house, you ever run away from home and you hide in a barber shop, we'll never find you. Because <laughs> I didn't want to cut my hair. I just didn't care. They said, well, let's suspend you. Well, get your suspenders. <laughs> I said, but you're missing a great opportunity. I said, I'm not as dumb as you think I am. I mean, and you know, sometimes I remember my English teacher, Mrs. Armady, I don't know if she still lives. I was a wonderful person. She'd say, Jesse, you can be anything you want. You've got tenacity. I said, yes. And I said, I'm not bragging. I said, I just, I come from poor beginnings and I'm going to make something of myself. She said, I like that. Don't never let anybody tell you you can't do something. And I said, Miss Armady, I'll never forget. I said, I won't. And she said, now you know you can make better grades. I said, well, I'm making C's and B's. Yeah, but she said, really, you're making F's when you can make A's. I never had nobody tell me that before. She said, you know, you always want to challenge yourself. Why are you doing second best when you can do best? Don't you want best in all you want to do? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, then why are you giving me papers that I have to grade as a C and a B when you could make an A? I said, Miss Omni, I apologize. I said, I promise you, I won't make A's. She said, that's good enough for me because I believe you're a man, a young man, call me a young man, young man of your word. I was only, f what, how, how old you are in English four, which is what, 16 years old, something like that? And bam, them grades went up and it wasn't hard to do. It's called study. <laughs> <laughs> See what I'm saying? Yeah, now I realized. I said, you know who I'm selling short? Me. 
I ain't selling anybody else short but me when I could have done better and I didn't. Now, when it came to music, oh, oh yeah, I, man, I studied, I practiced, I played, I did all that kind of stuff. So I decided to take that same tenacity into something that I love and put that same tenacity in something that I don't particularly care for, which would have been English and study, and this is for some of the younger people, and become what God wanted me to be. And I decided to do that. And the Lord, everything I've ever touched, I close with this, because it, I have no materialism. All mine's a manifestation. I've done everything in my life by my giving. And when I learned that what God would do, I had to do my best giving, but I also had to do my best receiving. That was harder than the best giving. Well, that best receiving was tough. Because sometimes people would give you something that they need. I knew they needed way more than I needed. But I, they had to connect with what was in me and on me so they could get that. I had a hard time understanding that because I kept seeing their poverty. And the, but the Lord said, Lord, I'm telling them that if they connect with you, they'll get out of that because what's on you will come upon them. And I used to amen that, but I, you know, when, when I got into that position, I'd go, Whew. I had one lady give me $20 one time. God is my witness. I went to a house. You could have went hunting in a house. Cracks in the wall this big. I am not lying on, on the, on the, on the river road, bless God, in Donaldsonville area. I'm t- I knew she's an old lady. Oh, I just tell her your name. One of the finest people I've met in my life. She's in heaven today. A Polish immigrant named Miss Sister Chalubic. And she said, I want to be, I want, I want to be, she's talking, I want to be a blessing to your ministry. And I knew she was going to eat dog food that week if, she, if I took that $20. I knew it. She had nothing. I said, I can't do that. And the Lord said, well, you sure can give a t- 20, can't you? Oh, yeah, Lord. He said, well, why can't you receive her best? Oh, Jesus. But you see, it was hard. And I said, Sister Chalubic, I'm going to get 20 souls for you. Oh, it's the tears come out. Oh, and I said, Are you, can, I, can I be able? Oh, no, I'll be fun. The Lord will take care of me. I just want to touch people for Jesus. Oh, it shook me up. It, it shakes me when I think about that. And you know what? God would bless her. God would bless her. So I'd see, I said, Sister Chalubi, have, did you eat today? Oh, this, I did I eat good? The Lord blessed me with a hundred dollars. Let me give you some. I said, no, no, I don't want you to give me. And, she, and the Lord said, what are you doing? You ever thought that I might want to give her a thousand dollars? And she said, but the Jesse, every time I give to you, minister, the Lord blesses me. I said, well, are you doing that because that? She said, no, I'm doing that because I love you, but it's not bad. She understood the principle more than I did. And she's in heaven today. I really think, in my opinion, this is me. When we all get to heaven, first, you know, I think she's going to be at the very front line. You ain't never heard of her. But when you see her, you remember me saying this at this convention. That is Sister Chalubi. She was such a blessing. Could barely speak English. Had a hard time understanding that. She says, is there anything, <laughs> is there anything I can do for you, for Jess? I said, yes. I said, you see that goose you got in your yard? She said, yes. I said, that's a demon-possessed goose. Kill that. (laughs) She said, what? I said, kill that goose. I said, every time I come, he's trying to bite me. Man, a goose pinch hard, boy. (laughs) And I said, beat that goose. (laughs) That was a demon-possessed goose. Now, he wasn't like that Affleck goose. I'm talking, this is a goose, boy. <laughs> sure enough, two weeks later, I came by. I got to get out of my car. Where that, where that demon with that goose? Because you got to run. He said, ah, ah, ah. He just come at you, man. Got to beat him in the head. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he must have <think, laughs> got saved. He's talking from heaven. Well, guess what? I walked in, I got said, where that goose? And she pulled out, she said, I cooked him. I said, give me a piece of that goose. I bit that goose as many times as he bit me. I won't let you know. Payback came. Stand to your feet. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is my last session. Did you enjoy it today? Did it answer some questions? Remember this, all of you that receiving overflow, because all of you will, you have a responsibility to always keep it as manifestation and never make it materialistic so people will understand and know.